audio is the way that I learn. It's the way that I've always learned. Mm. I have, you know, I mean, obviously I can read. Obviously I can, you know what I mean? Like, obviously. But I have a really hard time learning from reading. I have a really hard time reading books, you know? And I feel like in some sense, audio has allowed me to learn so much more about myself, learn different topics, learn different ways of healing and growing. I love to listen to audiobooks. That's how I learn. I listen to podcasts, obviously. And so I think audio plays such an important part in how a lot of people learn. Welcome to the Online Creator Podcast. I'm your host, Kim Tradewell, founder of May & James Co., a creative digital company. Building a brand is about human connection. I am here to help you articulate your story through strategy, development, and execution. I believe that anything is possible at any age and at any stage of business. The only limits we have are the ones that we place on ourselves. I want you to feel like you are supported, not alone, and that you are able to take action quickly. On this podcast, expect to hear interviews from a wide range of guest speakers, bite-sized solo episodes from myself, bingeable episodes that will give you insights, different perspectives, and actionable strategies to help you reach your goals personally and professionally. Now let's get into the show. Simona Costatini is the founder and CEO of Costatini Productions, a full-service podcast production agency. She is also the executive producer and host of two podcasts, Happiness Happens Podcast and As It Relates to Podcasting. She helps women entrepreneurs in the parenting, wellness, and marketing space bring their personality, brand, and passion to the mic by helping them launch, manage, and grow their podcasts. In this conversation, we discuss all the ways audio has opened up opportunities in her business and life, the moment she knew she wanted something more, what it felt like, and the steps she took to get there, the level of care that goes into the work that we do in production and service work, and how it is so much more than just a business transaction. Welcome to the show, Simona. Hello. Good morning, Simona. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited to dive into this world of audio with you because I think we, um, well, this is both of our worlds and it's just so exciting to talk to somebody that works in this field and get their, like, you know, their, their behind the scenes of what, what it's all about and how they've used it in their lives. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for inviting me, Kim. I am so excited to be on here with you today. Right on. Um, The first question that I ask my guests when they come on is really just how have you leveraged audio in your world? So maybe a little background of like where you started and where you are now and how you've utilized that. Yeah, I think that's such a good question. I love that you start with that question. And one of the things that immediately comes to mind for me when you're saying that is audio is the way that I learn. It's the way that I've always learned. Mm. I have, you know, I mean, Obviously, I can read. Obviously, I can, you know what I mean? Like, obviously. But I have a really hard time learning from reading. I have a really hard time reading books, you know? And I feel like, in some sense, audio has allowed me to learn so much more about myself, learn different topics, learn different ways of healing and growing. I love to listen to audiobooks. That's how. I learn, I listen to podcasts, obviously. Um, And so I think audio plays such an important part in how a lot of people learn, you know? And I think that it's not often talked about enough as a form of media for people to to grow, right? And so Mm -hmm. um, how I got into this space, I actually never thought that I would be in the podcast production space. So, you know, for our listener today, like I I work in, as you've said, like I work in podcast production and we do a lot of audio and video production. And I never anticipated that I would be in this world. You know, I went to school for public relations and marketing. Uh, I worked in PR and marketing for years, uh, bringing other stories to life, right? Mm-hmm. Stories of companies and people. And I loved it. You know, I did a lot of video production when I worked in corporate. And then I kind of found myself in this spot where I was just so unhappy. Like my life came to a halt. 
And on the outside, it was something that looked so perfect to everybody else, right? Like my life looked perfect to everybody else. How could you be unhappy? I mean, this is going to sound ridiculous. Like, how could you be unhappy? Like, you're pretty. Like, how could you be unhappy? You're, you know, you're like sunshine. How could you be unhappy? You're like always friendly. And it's like, thank you. And that's really nice to hear. But also, I think it like, how does, what's the word? Like, it devalidates, unvalidates. I don't know what that word is, but, you know, it takes, you you don't you can't validate your own emotions when somebody else is telling you how to feel a specific way right so anyway so it spiraled me into this like huge like dark night of the soul moment and I was like what is my life what am I doing here what is my purpose here why am I here what are we doing and you know I just kind of dove into it I dove I dove into learning and growing and reading and listening to podcasts and finding podcasts that aligned with me and what I wanted to grow into and how I wanted to grow. And then I decided to start my own podcast. (laughs) And that was kind of like the beginning of the end, if you will, like not the end, but like the beginning of a beautiful journey of, you know, launching my first podcast. And I know we'll go into it, but launching my first podcast and then deciding that I want to help other people bring their voices to the mic and their stories, because I really feel like everyone has something so beautiful to share with society, regardless of who you are and what you do. Yes. Everyone has a purpose in that, you know? So yes. it's a little oh small glimpse into like the journey, but never anticipated that I would be here today doing this, but I'm so grateful. Okay. There's so much good stuff that you just said I there. I'm not, not even yet. sure. I'm not sure what to start with, but I think one thing, like before we actually even hit record, I thought it was interesting a little bit that we just chatted about is that, is it something that when we're raised and we're raised to, you know, get an education and get a job and was it like, was that a piece of it too? Just like we were raised to do all this, these traditional ways of living our lives and our work life and and then for you to like try to let that all go I mean that's that's pretty intimidating I think at any age so I mean that has to have been part of it and then the other piece um is I mean kudos to you to like just jumping in because I've been like sitting on mine for like two years because I was just like, well, I love the, and because I was just like, well, I'm just going to help others, just like you said, and then I'll just put keep putting myself on the back burner. But how did you like just have enough faith and belief in yourself to just hit record when you did um, in that time? Because I think that's really that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, thank so you. so good that you did that. Thank you, and you know, I appreciate you saying that so much. And I think it always reminds me too how hard it can be to put ourselves out there in a big way. And like, I'll just say Mm -hmm. as a caveat, like I've never gone back and listened to any of my podcast episodes. Like I actually don't know what, I don't remember what I said in the first episode. I just know what people tell me, you know? And I think it's because it's like, this is going to sound pretty woo woo, but I think we can go there. But you know, I feel like people are channels in life. Okay. You're, you're, whether Mm -hmm. you realize it or not, you can channel messages. Like I see it all the time when my clients are recording their podcast episodes. And a message is just flowing through them. And it's so beautiful. And it's so perfectly put. It's not scripted. It's off the cuff. They're just riffing off their whatever that specific thing is that they want to talk about. Everyone is a channel for a bigger message. And Uh I think when we live in a society, we live in a society that puts so many conditions around who we are, who we should be, why we should be this way. And it's so frustrating because it doesn't leave any space for people to grow into what they want to be. It's like, no, you can't get, you can't leave your corporate job because that's not the way it's done. You shouldn't leave your marriage because it's not the right thing to do. You know, you've made a commitment to something. You've got to see it through. And I think that's a really old school way of, those are just two really random examples, by the way, but like, it's such an old school way of thinking about life and growth. Like, You have to do what you want to do at the end of the day. And it may hurt people in the process. But as long, I think, as long as you're not intentionally hurting people, there's a difference, right? Like intentionally hurting someone and trying to hurt someone and making them feel a certain way versus, you know, doing something out of love, if that makes any sense. Like Mm -hmm. when you choose you, you're choosing you out of love and out of love for yourself. You know what I mean? Yes. So, you know, when I decided that I wanted something more, it's because I didn't feel like I fit. I didn't feel like I fit anywhere. Like I would go to work every single day 
And I was, I would walk into the office and so grateful to have a job. Like, don't get me wrong. I was so grateful to have a job, but I would walk in and it was gray. You know what I mean? And it was like, there was no sunshine in the office. There was no, there was no nothing in, in the office. And so you need people to work a job. Like, you know what I mean? Like society needs Mm -hmm. people to, to work a job. It's not everybody's path to be an entrepreneur. It's not everybody's path to be a podcaster. It's not everybody's path to be a creator. But everyone has a purpose, right? And mm-hmm. so I just started following those little breadcrumbs, those little nudges of, you know, this is, this feels good. I'm going to keep doing this. This feels good. I'm going to do this. This doesn't feel good mm-hmm. anymore. I need to shift. And when you start tuning into yourself and you start listening to what it is you actually want out of life, it brings you to a place that A, you would have never anticipated being, probably, and B, you grow and you learn so much about yourself, you know? And so it's that choice of, for me, it was a no brainer choice because it was like, okay, well, I'm either going to get to the end of my life and be happy that I took the leap mm-hmm. or I'm going to get to the end of my life and I'm going to be, you know, sad that I never took a chance and, and tried. You know what I mean? Yes, I know what you mean. And I think you're right. You said so much good stuff there again. Like, I think it isn't for everyone. I mean, the security of having your nine to five working, you know, 40 hours a week or, however many hours a week, getting the pulling out your pension at the end of your light work span. If that's what your, that's what your life means. And that's, that's important. That's, that's amazing too. And that's very much success in that way. But I too felt the same as you and was just like, there's got to be more. And my mom's a forever learner. I'm a forever learner. Mm -hmm. The only difference between the two of us taking that step into entrepreneurship is that I have a little bit maybe more support or probably because it's not as much pressure on me Mm -hmm. to be able to do this because I have a partner that has that nine to five or that, you know, uh, consistent income and allows me a little bit of flexibility to be able to try this um, on my end because we both contribute to the family. And Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. And I think that's where a lot of people get hung up because it's, it is scary. Entrepreneurship is scary, but knowing and listening to your body and, and listening to what feels right and being able to try versus always wonder what if I think is really powerful. And I've always been really, really um, that person that took life like I'm going to try this for a year and see what it's like I'm going to try like kind of goal setting right I'm going to try this for five years if it's like still my job in five years and I'm still really excited and happy and there's still sunshine there and it's not great I'm going to continue because I have had the fortune of having such an amazing job for so long and a co-worker that has I've been very very blessed to work with we really work well with each other but I just always knew there was more yeah right and I think I think that's what's so powerful about what you said. I think it's just, are we at that time of life where we're able to try? And Mm -hmm. I don't want to be at the end of my life, like you said, and going, oh, what if, or could I have tried that? Or, you know, all those good things. So, so, so good that you took that leap of faith and and listened um, because I don't think a lot of us do. No, but you know what? I think too, Kim, like a lot of the times people what I've realized is a lot of the times there's so much there. I mean, there's so much there to unpack and like, we can go there if you want to, but we don't have to, but there's so much to unpack in the sense of like, you know, people are not aware of what they want in their life. You know what I mean? It's, there's so many stories and there's so many things that, you know, we've been told about who we are and how we are that that is exactly how we show up every single day. Not even questioning or thinking, is that true for me? Like, is that really a thing that's true for me? You know, and so when I started questioning, it was just it was just exactly that it was questioning all of the things that other people said about me and who I was. And I was like, but am I those things? Because I don't feel those things on the inside. I don't feel like a happy, bubbly sunshine. Like I actually feel like a miserable, like Mm -hmm. terrible, gossipy, mean person. Like that's how I feel, you know. And so it's like that piece. People talk a lot about authenticity, but it's like that piece in between tapping into who you truly are and like going through the layers of like stuff and like choosing to dig that out and choosing better and choosing more for yourself versus am I okay with this for the rest of my life? Like, am I actually good with it? And if you are like, that's great. You know what I mean? Like not everyone has this whole big, huge awakening and all the stuff and like goes through all of the things. Like not everyone has that. And that is amazing. And some people do. And it completely changes your life and rocks it in a way that you would never anticipate. So. So what is possible? 
right? Like what is possible? And then I think when you do and are able to start tapping into the possibilities of what could be, Mm -hmm. that's when you start to shine it. Because I know I've only done a few podcast guest interviews right now. Um, I think I have like about eight under my belt and I've had some amazing people have these amazing conversations that just kind of like, you know, go down a different path. But it's so interesting because one question sparks something like this Mm. and it just lights. And just like you said, you can be listening to, because I only take a handful of retainer clients because I'm still a solopreneur and, and I get to choose who I get to work with because it takes, I I put a lot of time and energy just like you do, I'm sure, into production. I want like an amazing quality product at the end, Mm -hmm. an audio product, an asset that they can really have for many, many years to share with their audience. And so I... I spend a lot of time and my time is valuable. And I'm really noticing that in different ages of my life and stages, <laughs> right? And I'm like, wow, I, I really don't want to spend like three hours on this production of this asset if I'm not enjoying the conversation yeah, or if I'm not enjoying the content, right? Yeah. So I think it's amazing, A, that I get to be able to do that or we get to be able to choose who we get to work with in this field, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. And there's, I've met some amazing clients. Like I really, truly am blessed and, um, who I've been able to work with, as I'm sure you have been. But when you get to listen and hear how they light up is what so excites me. And the stories, and we didn't get into that either. I think the power of sharing someone's story when they are in their greatness or when they're in their zone of genius is so powerful. And I love, I love that we get to be a part of that. Oh, it is so true. And I think that there's such a difference that you said this without actually saying these words, but there's a level of care that goes into it's so much more than just a business. You know what I mean? It's a true extension of your self, of your soul, of your purpose, of your desire and dream to help somebody else bring their desires and dreams to life, right? Like one of the things I like to say about my business is, you know, we help people bring their voice to the mic and help them share their stories in the way that they need to share them. Because I'm sure you'll agree with this. Like if, if someone doesn't come to the mic and share the story that they need to share, okay. How, and there's a lot of stuff that people like, there's a lot to unpack in the way that, you know, maybe people don't feel ready and they're not comfortable and they're not, there's a self-worth piece there too. Like there's all kinds of stuff and stories that come up for that. The biggest thing, in my opinion, that comes up for that is the fact that when you don't show up in your way that you are meant to show up every single day, you're doing a disservice to the people who need you, to who need to learn from you and hear from you and be in your space. You know what I mean? And so that was one thing that has always kept me going in all like in both of my podcasts and in my business as well. If I don't show up as me, and my gifts and all that I'm supposed to be doing here and that I'm grateful to be doing here in my life, when I don't show up as that person, there's so many people that I may not even realize that may not benefit from whatever that piece of information was that I needed to share. Do you know what I mean? Like, and things resonate with different people, right? But, Mm -hmm. you know, when you were saying to about working with clients on retainer and all of that, and I agree with you fully, like, you, first of all, people can choose who they want to work with, right? You are not guaranteed a client. You are not guaranteed business. But I believe when you're truly leading from your heart and from a place of care and genuine authenticity and being, being caring towards people, for lack of a better word, that is the differentiating factor. You know what I mean? Like I only work with clients that align to my values as a business owner, yes, kindness 100%. being the first one. Mm-hmm. If you're kind, we're not working together. It's not going to happen. Like I only want to work with clients that I can go out and have lunch with and have a glass of wine with. And that's for everyone, you know, but that's the kind of business that I want to have. Those are the kind of relationships that I want to have. I don't need to like, we don't need to cross the boundaries and you don't need to tell me about your whole entire life if you don't want to. But if you want to, you can know that you can and you can share and hold Absolutely. space. And I'm uh, that's yeah. the kind of business that that I've created that I'm so grateful for. And people ask me all the time, like, how do you have so many referrals? How do you have so many? Like we produce, and this is going to sound insane. We produce more than 20 podcasts on a weekly basis. I have a team. That's insane. More, I have a team. So yeah. like, it's not possible without my team. Yeah. That said, every single person 
aligns to the company's mission, vision, values. You know, every single person. Yes, and yes. if they don't, then it's not a fit. And then it's a fit for somebody else. There's more than right. enough to go around. And people ask me, like, awesome. how do you have, you know, so much referral business? How do you have so many clients? Like all these different questions. And the only thing that comes to mind is, well, actually, there's a couple things that come to mind. But what the biggest ones that come to mind are, the client experience is everything to me. That is the most important mm-hmm. piece is the client experience. And secondly, I'm only working with people that I would genuinely be happy to call a friend. You know what I mean? Yes. Other than that, no, that is I don't so want it. Good. <laughs> I don't want it. That is so good and so important. And I think that's really powerful for people to hear because it's just like me and you talking. We're in the same industry, but yeah. I love networking and collaborating with like-minded people. Yeah people because that's the only way that we we keep going and keep supporting and lifting each other up and I think um yeah it's and amazing we're, there's we're so many in the people, business like, of people if you're not going to be yes. a real human being in your right. business I genuinely don't know how you can have a business you know what I mean like exactly. you're in the business of people like yes it, you just you have to care like I, I tell my clients all the time, like I care about their show just as much as I care about mine. If I wouldn't do it for mine, I wouldn't do it for yours. And yes. if I would do it for mine, I will try it for yours, you know? So I don't know. I just think that there's, it's so important to remember that people are people at the end of the day. Yes, you're provi- providing a yes. service. Yes, there's an exchange of energy in some kind where there's money mm-hmm. or whatever you want to look at it. Yes, those things are definitely there. But at the end of the day, it's still people. It's just people. It's just relationships, right? Oh. So, so good. Thanks. Okay, you let's dive into your podcast because you've sure. had a couple and you have you have two going on right now. Yes. Kind Can of. you share how that experience do you how do you use them, I guess, mm. A, and and what's the experience been like? Because you've had them for a little while. Yeah, sure. That's a thank you for asking that question. Mm. Um so my first podcast is called Happiness Happens. And it's on a little bit of a hiatus right now. So the last episode I published was in June of this year that like that we're currently in. Um, and I'm not sure of the evolution of that podcast. I don't 100% know where it's going to go. Uh, but the purpose of that podcast was a big part of my initial healing journey when I first started podcasting. You know, I first talked about topics that would that were hard to talk about, like um, anger and fear resentment, judgment, um, gossip, like all kinds of, of those different topics. It evolved. And then I started interviewing business owners and hearing their stories of how they've gotten to where they are, they are from where they were, which I absolutely loved. And then I evolved it again even further in interviewing, you know, thought leaders in the spiritual space and hearing what happiness means to them and how they've, they've found happiness in their lives. And so that's been the third sort of iteration of it. And I know that there's going to be more to it. Um, I just don't know when the time is going to be, but I know it's that podcast. It's sole purpose is to a be a catalyst in my own healing journey and then b help other people spark that light within them and theirs. So that's the, that's the main so goal with that podcast. Um, so good. Oh, I, I love that show. And you know, Kim, like it has brought me so many amazing friends, like one of my best friends I met because she found me through my podcast. She reached out on Instagram. Oh it turned out that we lived so close by. Like she lived, I lived just outside of Toronto. She lived in Toronto. We met up at an event and she's like my soul sister. Like, I don't know what I would do without her. So good. Who would have thought? You know what I mean? That's like, so crazy. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. And like one thing that I say all the time, you don't know who you're going to meet in your podcasting journey. Like you don't know how one guest will lead to like another, another thing, another iteration. Like when I launched my podcast Mm -hmm. production services, I, (laughs) some of the people that bought those initial, the initial spots in my services was because they knew me from happiness happens because they knew me as they were a guest on my show or they were a recommendation from somebody else. Like you don't Mm -hmm. know how things will evolve. Right. And that's the first po- first podcast, and I love I st- I love that podcast. It still gets downloads today, even for me, like not so doing good. any promotion or publishing any new content, which is amazing. So that's that one. And then earlier on, or actually, sorry, towards the end of 2022, I decided to launch a second podcast, and this one is called As It Relates to Podcasting. And the reason why I launched this podcast was because I first of all, saw a huge gap in the market. There's so many podcasts that talk about podcasting, 100%. Mm -hmm. And they are amazing podcasts. 
and I'm not knocking them at all because I think there's a lot of value there and there's people who are sharing some really incredible things. And I still found that there was a gap in the market. And the gap that I found was the conversations didn't go deep enough. They didn't go, they were more Mm -hmm. surface level, right? As you would, how much can you cover in an hour really, you know? Mm -hmm. And so what I wanted to do was create more of like a series style podcast where a podcaster could come and be like, you know what? I want to learn everything I need to know about Pinterest, or I want to know everything I need to learn about paid advertising, marketing, and funnels, or I want to learn everything I need to know about guest recording um, or okay. TikTok or YouTube, like all of those individual things. So it's still a brand new show in the sense that like there aren't all of the topics there yet, but they are coming mm-hmm. and I have a lot planned for how the show will evolve. So that's how I decided to create the podcast. And I was like, you know what? This is something that I think people need because mm-hmm. most podcasters don't know what lead generation is. And most podcasters don't know what an email marketing sequence is and a funnel and why you would need it. Right. And most people don't know how to run a paid ad or take their content and repurpose it for Pinterest or, you know, take their reel or their content and put it on TikTok. Like people Mm -hmm. don't know those things. Right. And so that's the gap that this podcast fills. And I actually do it. They're co hosted mini series with one specific person. And we deep dive into that one particular topic so that my listener can go on that journey with both of us, get to know both of us. And I want to sell their services too. You know what I mean? Like I want to sell their products too. Right. So a great way to network and collaborate through podcasting. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons why too, I say a lot about audio, creating audio assets. That Mm. makes sense because audio can look different for so many different people and in so many different ways. And you know, like having a traditional podcast isn't for everyone, but creating audio in your business can be, Mm -hmm. and it's can be so powerful in so many different ways. So I love that you're deep diving different ways to, to market it and create it because I I just do believe that we are literally just still scratching the surface about audio education and what that could look like. And so that is like one of the biggest reasons why too, I have this podcast because I wanted to share all the ways that you can potentially use your voice to Mm -hmm. share your story or why and help others and, you know, learn and grow and all of those things. And I love that you're, you really like even your first podcast is an evolution of where you started and now where you are and the power of networking through it and meeting people. Like I said, before we hit record too, I have met some of the most amazing people online and, and that's without my podcast. And this is just like new. So I can't wait to see what doors potentially open with having this and hosting it this way. Oh, Um, that's so, it's unreal. And I think there's so much power in what you've said because Audio is so untapped. And I think that Mm -hmm. a lot of the times people think that it's done and it's finished, but I feel like we're just getting started. Yes, video content is taking over. Absolutely. Like, but be a piece of it for sure. But, right? Like, if you think you watch a video, are you going to watch a video with shit audio? Pardon my French. You're not. You know what I mean? You're not going to watch a video that you can't understand. Even if you're a TikTok creator and you have your camera right in front of your face. It still needs to be clear. It still needs to, the sound still not, doesn't need to be bouncing around left, right, and center. Like it still has to be good. And even more so now, I think because there are so many creators and so many Mm -hmm. people stepping up and sharing their message, those little things that you do to make your audio more clear or just care a little bit more, make a difference. They really, really, really make a difference because in a sea of podcasts, The ones that are going to stand out are the ones that sound polished, the ones that sound Mm -hmm. put together, the ones that sound expert. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say that the other ones won't because there is a market for every, absolutely every single thing. But if I'm, if I'm thinking for myself, like I was telling my friend the other day, he had put out a podcast episode and it's interesting because like the audio experience is so different based off of a, like the composition of your brain, for example, Mm -hmm. the type of headphones that you're using, where you're Mm -hmm. listening to a podcast. So for example, so he had taken a a podcast episode and I love listening to his podcast, but he had taken a podcast episode and he had um, him on one side and the guest on the other side. So it's like, you're kind of like listening to it in two headphones. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I was like, interesting, like interesting choice. Like, I wonder why you would do that. So I was listening to it with my AirPods 
And my, like, I'm sure I have some kind of like ADHD or something. Like, there's got to be something in there. I don't know. I have no idea. But my yeah. brain could not handle hearing it in both ears, which some people for. find that comforting, right? So I had to turn mm. it off. And I was like, well, I can't listen to this. I tried listening to it with like over the ear headphones. Same thing. I was like, well, yeah. I can't listen to this. I listened to it in my car and it was a completely different experience. I felt like I was in like a stadium. Like I could like listen to really? both things. It was the weirdest thing. And it just made me think about how different audio impacts people so differently. Oh my gosh. That's it was so crazy. Cool. I've never actually experienced that. I that's know. So crazy. That's so crazy. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> now I'm going to have to like dig into that a little bit. But, but even like the potential of being like, not just like more accessible, which I think is so, so important. And I think we need to be mm. thinking about that yeah. whenever we create anything in our businesses. But the amount of people that I have talked to that we have, we are all so busy. I, I'm constantly multitasking. That's why I fell in love with audio as well, that I can like learn as I'm going. But also like if I'm creating and spending all this time and energy in a course, I want whoever is purchasing it to actually complete it. Yeah. Right. So if I can, I mean, video is not going away. Like you said, it is like what everybody is gravitating to. But if I am thinking and thoughtful about how I can create my audio course and create it in a way that allows people to learn where they're at, mm. like, why wouldn't I do that? Yeah. I mean, I could still create links to, you know, like maybe this is a visual piece and I'll give you a little one-on-one -on, -one on, on how to use the script for editing for your yes. own podcast or whatever. Yeah. Like I can always create that. I think there's always a place for video, but if we can like really wrap our heads around thinking a little differently about how and where we can use audio and mm. how it can really create an experience for the people in our world um, to be successful, like, why wouldn't we do that? Right? It's crazy. It's crazy. May and James Co. has all the resources you need to create audio assets in your business. You can go to mayandjamesco.com and check out all the things. We have done for you and done with you services that will meet you at any stage of your business. If you're starting a podcast or refining what you have, or if you want to create audio to support your coaching business or for your marketing efforts, there's so many ways to create audio. Let's chat. Take what you've learned on this podcast and implement it into your own business. You can find the link in the show notes and use code podcast to get 15% off any service or product on the site. Start building your brand, your community, through leveraging your voice and organically creating income and impact today. And you know, when you were, when you were talking, I was thinking about something that, and this is not like an audio example, but when I, I redid my website earlier in 2022, and when I was going through the web designer was explaining to me how how and why like the colors weren't the way that I had like applied them was hard for people to read because I didn't realize that at the time like not everybody sees the same way that I do you know That's what I mean right. like we yeah. don't all see color in the exact same way we actually have no That's idea right. what other people are experiencing when they're looking at something you only mm -hmm. have the way that you can experience it same thing with audio yeah. right the way that I listen to something the way that you listen to something be completely different and mm -hmm. so I was thinking to myself, I was like, wow, like, I feel like we get so it's easy to get so consumed in, in doing something for your own self, for your business, for your this, for your that. But when you take a step back and you start to look at how all of your services, your products, your website, your marketing, your audio experience, your video experience, what are those different pieces like for other people? It makes such mm -hmm. a difference thinking about it from a bird's eye view and a different perspective than what mm -hmm. is good for me. It's not about me. It's about That's what right. is good for the person who's listening. How are they going to feel? How's that message going to land? Mm -hmm. Are they going to feel inspired? What's the tone of your voice? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What's the music you're picking? Like all of those things create an experience. And it's yes. just such a powerful thing audio because you can't have video without audio. You know what I mean? Like you can't have one without the other. Like you can have audio with yeah. no video, but you can't have just video like without 
words. And even right. if, like, okay, and I'm just going to like go off on a tangent for a sec, but even if you can't hear, like if you're, if you're hard of hearing, yeah, you still need words to put context, right? right? Even if you're reading them. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Does that make sense? Do you know what I mean? Totally I hope I'm not sense. sounding totally insensitive here, but. No, no, okay, it's true. I just think we need to to be aware of, yeah, not it's it's outside of us. Yeah, what we are creating is not for us. Even like I tell clients all the time, your podcast episode has to bring value. It can't mm-hmm. be just regurgitating the same information over and over and over again, so you have thirty minutes of content exactly because you're listening. If you only have ten minutes worth of value, only do ten minutes. Just do ten minutes. We don't need to be saying I, I, forty five minutes. Right. Because listen, like I have some like amazing podcasts in my Rolodex that are only 10 minutes in length max. Yeah. And I get a ton of value out of that. So you have to just be respectful of who your listeners are, who your audience is, and what you're bringing them and listen to them. Yes. Because like get feedback, you know, are they understanding what you're providing? Are, are you missing something? Is there a way to expand and be more, just more... I don't know, holistic in a way that that makes sense because that's what it should be all about. Mm -hmm. That's what I love that. You know, one of my favorite podcasts is uh, (laughs) I always talk about this podcast and like I don't even know how I came across this show. Like it's not one that I produce. It's just one that I found randomly on Spotify. It's called Make Your Damn Bed and it's five minute episodes. And the idea is that you would listen to it while you're making your bed and it's short snippets of advice. And she was I I believe she um, releases an episode every single day. And I love this concept, like five minutes, quick hit. Oh my God. My perspective is completely shifted for the day. Yeah. I love that. Like it's just genius. Like you don't need to sit here and have a three hour long conversation for it to be valuable. You really don't. Oh my gosh. So cool. Like think how, okay, I'm probably going to go on a tangent, but I love tangents. honestly, like I just like, I love how you can use audio so differently. And that's just such a great example. Like there's one too, that I listen to and she does like a serious podcast on her own. It's all about business at the beginning of the week. And then she does this like off the cuff one with her husband driving on a Friday for like, you know, what, however long, sometimes it's only 10 minutes, sometimes it's 15, but it's kind of like an inside view of who she is a little bit more. Yeah. And, and it doesn't like tell all the details, but you just, just get a sense you get to feel her personality so much more Mm. and I think that's what the power of audio can do too right it can really showcase who you are in a way that's personal if that makes sense Mm -hmm. because I feel like like a lot of us when we listen to someone over and over and over and weekly if they're in our you know lineup you, you feel like if you saw them in a room at some kind of event it would be easy to go up to them and say, oh my gosh, it's so great to meet you because you feel like you have this relationship built with them. And I don't know, maybe that's weird, but I no, I true. love the off the cuff one. It's just her personality shines so much and her, her partner just kind of like lights a fire under her, which when you have a partner in life, I hope that does the same for you because that's what life is all about. It's the banter. It's the laughter. It's the hard conversations. It's the easy conversations. It's all the things in between. And when you get to get a glimpse of what that human is like and get to know them, I, I want to listen to her business podcast on the regular then because yeah. I, I feel like, yeah, I totally get her vibe. I totally, but you know, it's so funny because I'll listen to a new podcast for maybe I should give them longer, but sometimes I'll listen to one for like two minutes and I'm like, yeah, no. Yeah. It's not going to be for me. <laughs> <laughs> like that's maybe harsh and maybe I should try them again, but maybe they just had a bad episode or something, but it's so funny. You could just feel that energy and that vibe. And if it's not matching what I want in my world, yeah. then I go to the next one yeah. because it's easy to do that. And I think that's really the power of knowing that there's so many different podcasts out there for so many different people. Exactly. And it isn't a saturated market. I think it's like you said before, it's there's so much possibility with it if you're willing to sit back and look at your whole business, not just a piece, a piece of, of, of that. And yeah. I think that's the other thing I want to kind of lean into a little bit. When you are working with clients, like, is there a piece of advice that you talk to new clients about how to incorporate audio in a way that makes sense and that it isn't to create some kind of sustainable product at the end of the day? Because it's a lot of work. Putting all of this together and all of this energy is a lot of work. So how how can you see success in some of those clients that just really kind of do a few of the tips or steps that you work with them on? Well, I think, you know, when it comes to the actual setup of your audio, I think that's really important. 
I would rather mm-hmm. get the setup right first before mm-hmm. we before you hit record so that when you do record, we're not having to do all this EQ balancing this, that, like, you know, right. like if you just sort of take the time to set it up right in the beginning, then you don't really yes. have to worry too much about that. Like, of course, there might be small things that you may tweak and change and all of that, which is normal and like necessary. It's why we have editors. It's why we have people who help with with all of that stuff. But I think, too, it's like remembering that, you know, what you sound like and what your mm-hmm. how your setup is makes it an impact Matters. on people. Like it For really sure it impacts does. people um, and how they're yeah. listening and it'll encourage them to listen. Like your content can be amazing, but if the audio doesn't sound good, then people won't listen, right. you know? Yeah. And so, yeah. So I, I feel like, I don't know if this answers the question fully, but I think when you really take the the time to be intentional about what equipment am I using? You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be if you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be. But being intentional about what is the output going to sound like, I think that's a big, I think that's a big thing. So my husband and I will go, we'll sit on calls with clients and we test their, their, their audio together. We test their setup. We look at their background. What does everything look like? How does everything look? How does everything sound? Is it clear? Is it muffled? Does it sound like you're swimming underwater? You know, we do that and we don't, I don't charge extra for that. It's just a thing that we do for our clients to make sure that they have the best possible output at the end of the day. And if it doesn't sound good, then we fix it. And we, you know, sometimes that might mean you have to reshoot something if you want to. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. But I don't know, you put so much time and energy in creating your podcast. Like, don't you want it to be polished? Like, don't you want it to sound good? Even if it's off the cuff, like even if it's, you know, off the cuff, off of your phone, there's a way to make it sound good off of your phone, right? So it's just about learning how to do that. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Are you seeing more and more of your clients using like video style podcasting? Yeah. 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 And are you encouraging that? Is that something that you really try to build into? Yeah. I do. I do. I get my clients to record with video if they want to, because they have to be comfortable with being on video. Uh, I think that for so many reasons, video, it's important to have it. Even if you don't want to publish it right now, today, mm-hmm. you know, even if you don't want to publish it right now, you don't necessarily to, but it's so good to have that content on video because if there comes a day where you're like, you know what? Yeah, I want to put all of my past 50 episodes on YouTube. Well, now you have the video okay. content. You know what I mean? You don't right. have to worry about it. And, in a, you know, people, I think that it's a, it's a mixed bag, right? Because not everyone likes to learn from video content. So you really do have to have, especially when you're promoting your podcast and creating that whole s- strategy around that. You want to make sure that your um you're kind of hitting all the different sides, like people who want just Mm -hmm. a photo, people who want just an audiogram, people who want just a video. And there's so many different types of content that you can create. But when you already have that video, you're just already kind of ahead of the game. You don't have to worry about it. You know, it's just already there. And my team and I use Descript to edit. So the podcasts that are not video podcasts or audio only podcasts, you know, we still use Descript to edit. Um, yes. And the reason why is because it makes so much sense because you can edit off of the video. Oh my gosh. Um, it's so amazing. Well, right. Because even like, I mean, from mm-hmm. an editing perspective, how you edit video and how you edit audio are completely different, right? Like they're different ways of mm-hmm. editing. But if a client potentially wants to use the video one day, now we have it and we don't have to go back and re-edit the whole thing. So I'm not a huge fan of it right now. I'm not going to lie because like there's so many growing pains with it as they're transitioning to their new system. But I'm praying and hopeful that we're going to get through it because I just love it so much. So much. No, I agree. I agree. There's been some tweaks that I'm like, what is happening Why here? Are we but doing I'm this? just trying to like power through it because I honestly believe also that it's so um, important to do exactly what you said. And when an editor's standpoint, like I do not want to have to like pull it out, put it into yeah. another platform or have to revisit it to do it again. That exactly. doesn't make any sense to me. No. And, and my time and energy is valuable just like everybody else's. So exactly. I think that's really important. Oh my gosh. I could keep talking to you, but I know. Like in order to like kind of like wrap this up, is there anything that you are working on right now that you would like to share with my listeners and also how how they can find you? Yes. Okay. So my team and I are working on more digital products Mm -hmm. as we continue to grow and expand. So I have, you know, a couple of freebies on my website that you could go and you can check out. I'm sure you'll put the links in the show notes. So one of them is uh, a guide to start and launch your podcast in eight weeks. 
And the other one is the tech and uh, equipment guide, like, you know, just to get started, what do you Love need? That. What kind of content, mm-hmm. what kind of equipment do you need to get started? So those are those two. And I mean, I have an online course to help podcasters create their podcast as well, but I'm actually launching something in December of 2022, but just like between you and me, this is going live when? In the new year? Uh, in the new year. Okay. Yes. That's why I keep like trying to put dates so yeah. that it's not like, okay, yes. sorry, you might have to cut this part out. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's all good. Okay. So we are creating, a, so we have created and launched in December of 2022 a graphics uh, template pack. So one of the biggest things that I see with podcasters all the time and creators of any kind is you spend so much time creating your content, right? And you really don't have any energy left to promote it. So one thing that I know, I know my team does really well is graphics. They're always beautiful. They're always on point. They're always relevant. So what we did was create a download where you can go and you can get templated YouTube covers, Pinterest pin templates, Instagram, TikTok, Reel, like all of the different types of content that you would need. And I'm selling it for $31. So it's on my website. You can go and grab it. Um, The reason why $31 is because I I turned 31 in December. So I was like, well, that's Uh, fun. So (laughs) might as well. Totally is. Totally is. Oh my gosh. That sounds like a really exciting product because I think you're right. I think it gets a little overwhelming. So instead of like doing all the things, we just don't do any of them to promote. And we can't just like create this product and not exactly. promote it. So exactly. I think that's fantastic that you're offering that. And where where can people find you? People can find me on my website, simonacostantini.com. Or you can find me on Instagram. It's Simona with two underscores Costantini. And my podcast is the Happiness Happens podcast on any podcast platform. And as it relates to podcasting is the other podcast, again, on any podcast platform. You can also grab them from my website if you want to just go there as a central place. And I'm also on TikTok. I'm trying to grow that as well. So um, oh I gosh, believe it's I at Simona with two underscores class and TV, but it's on my website. So, Oh, so fun. So yeah. fun. Well, before you let, I let you go, we're going to do a couple of uh, quick, fast, rapid fire questions. Oh, I'm so excited. I'll, okay. I, <laughs> I'll be succinct. I think I got to keep building to this, <laughs> building onto this, but I, am, I will definitely have all of those links in the show notes. So thank you so much for your time and energy. Okay. So super fun. Just, you know, not like, don't stress about okay. this. <laughs> How do you how do you shake off a bad day? Because as an entrepreneur, I just feel like there's some days that are not all rainbows and sunshine. And how how do you shake that off? Okay, so I is my sound counterintuitive, but I do not try and push it. I let it I let I feel it. If I have to cry, mm-hmm. I have to cry. If I have to walk, I have to walk. If I need to go for a spin on my Peloton, I do that. If I need to write something, I write. It never looks the same. Um, I write a lot of poetry, so sometimes I'll write out like whatever I'm feeling and I just let it move. I let it move through me. Sometimes it takes three days. Sometimes it takes five hours. Sometimes it takes one minute. It always is different, but you have to let the energy move. You have to feel every single emotion and you have to let it flow or you're never going to, it's never going to pass and you're never going to feel better. I love that. I love that. Knowing what you know now, what would you tweet your younger self? Oh, Because I feel like you've had a journey and you're only turning 31. Like, that's incredible. But I feel like you have had this amazing journey already in in business life. And I don't even know your personal (laughs) life, right? So what, yeah, what would you tell your younger self? I would tell my younger self that every moment, every hard moment that I've gone through had a reason and a purpose. I may not understand today why that thing had to happen the way it did, but even your trauma is your biggest teacher and everything that you go through in life becomes a beautiful building block to where you're meant to go next in 140 characters. I love that. (laughs) I love that. that. What, and last one, what is, what is your superpower? If someone was to come to you and be like, ugh, I just want to work with you because of this, what would it be? I think my superpower would be my kindness. Genuinely. Mm -hmm. I think that I care so deeply about other people. I care about other people's happiness. I care about other people's journeys. Um, I care about their healing. I care about their podcasts. I care about their lives. It's my biggest core value in my business. So I would say kindness. 
Well, that definitely came across in the interview Thank today. You. I am really honored that you took the time. I am so excited that our paths crossed and I threw it out there in the universe to see if you would be able to join me today. So I really appreciate you. And I am so, so glad we've had the opportunity to meet and for others to be able to learn from you because you have a ton to offer. And I cannot wait to see where your business uh, takes off because it sounds pretty, pretty exciting. Thank you so much for this beautiful time together, this space together for having me on your podcast. I am so grateful. And honestly, I just thank you so much for for saying that. It means so much to me. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening into the show. It truly means so much to me. You can check out the important links mentioned in today's episode in the show notes, and please join the conversation over on Instagram at me and James Co. I love hearing from you. There are so many great conversations coming up, so please make sure you are subscribed to Apple or Spotify or any of your favorite media players so that you don't miss out. And if you enjoyed the show today, please share and leave a review and a rating because it helps us so very much. Until next time.